Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, RIP version 2 and more specifically at the CCIE level. Uh, I've been studying for CCIE for quite, of, quite some time and RIP version 2 it is on the test and you don't hear much information about it so basically I'm going to be taking you through what the CCIE version 5 blueprint wants you to know. Okay now next slide the thing about RIP version 2 is that it is a distance vector protocol. It is like the epitome of the distance vector protocol. And what that actually means is a raise of distance to known networks. So if you break it down, distance and vector, distance how far or what is the metric to a particular network and vector a unidimensional array, like what interface am I pointing towards? So that's what distance vector actually means. Now there are some key messages that exchange uh, um, that contains like the outgoing interface, which is the array, and then uh, just the distance to that network. So uh, at that level, it's very basic. Um, then the advertising router who sends you that update or that network, um, he becomes the next hop. And that is what a distance vector routing router will use to send information to that towards that network. It will use that as a next hop. All right. Now, if there are multiple routers or neighbors that advertise the same network, then a distance vector protocol will choose the one with the lowest distance or the lowest metric. And in RIP version two, it's pretty much hops. How many layer three devices do I have to go through to get to that destination network? And if there are multiple routers with the same lowest distance, then RIP version two will actually use both of them. It's called equal cost multipath. Okay. Now, after a router learns about a network from its neighbor, chooses a next hop, installs it in its routing table, all that has to come together for it to actually advertise it out as well. So learn the neighbor, learn the next hop, learn the route, put it in the routing table. Now you're good to go to tell all your other RIP version two friends about it. Uh, in Cisco routers, a router advertises directly connected networks plus all of the um, routes learned through RIP. But the thing is, it has to be in the routing table, period. If, if it's not in the routing table, RIP will not advertise it. Uh, that's a big thing when it comes to learning about uh, dynamic routing protocols. The only exception is like link state routing protocols, regardless if it's in the uh, routing table or, or not, they will advertise everything they know. Distance vector protocols, EIGRP, um, and uh, RIP version two, it has to be in the routing table. So whether it's connected networks or even just RIP learn what lick, RIP learn networks, it has to be in the routing table. Um, an extension of distance vector protocols is actually the path vector protocol. Um, some people believe that BGP, it is a path vector protocol, period. Like there's no such thing as BGP being a distance vector. However, like I have here, it says it's fundamental, fundamentally the same. They don't exchange all of the link states like the way OSPF does. All BGP does it says, okay, you know this network, how far is it? What interface do you go out of? And then there's an extension where they actually exchange path elements. That's like the only extra stuff that BGP will send versus uh, what RIP will send. All right. Now, in contrast to distance vector protocols, there is the link state routing protocol. I already mentioned this before. It is OSPF, ISIS, and what they do is they exchange information about individual objects in the topology right that right there they send everything they know about it and when they send everything they know about this network and they pass it on to areas in their or uh, routers in their area they get to build a topology map or a directed graph and from there everyone has the same picture and then they are able to build this shortest path tree or run this shortest path algorithm that was invented by Edsker Dijkstra, all right? So everything that OSPF ISIS knows, routers, multi-access networks, routers of the borders of area or borders of an autonomous system, so on and so forth. And from once they have this graph, again, they build this shortest path tree from it. It is perceived that the downside to link state routing is the amount of complexity of data that needs to be maintained in the router's database. As I learned this, I firmly believed it. It's like, well, yeah, look at all these routes. Look how much LSAs that we have to uh, keep track of. And that is sort of true, but, that, but this is when it first came up. 
and it says using a link state routing protocol uses lots of RAM and CPU power, but in today's technology, that's almost a moot point. Uh, but Cisco says a rule of thumb, have no more than 50 routers in a single area and no router, no single router should be in more than three areas. Okay. A uh, big problem downside is the inability to perform route summarization, filtering, or offset lists in any place of the network. That is totally true in link state routing. Um, at any router, you cannot just summarize or filter because that's the whole point of link state routing is the only person who can alter their routes is the one who originates it. So I originate an LSA, I pass it on to my neighbor. He cannot edit it. He cannot filter it. He has to pass it on and flood it to everyone else. The only one that can do that are area border routers because they are the translator between area zero to any other area. And then since they are creating a whole new LSA, that is where summarization or filtering can, can be applied. All right. Now for RIP version two basics, uh, at the CCIE level, you have to pretty much memorize this um, chart right here. The general characteristics, it uses UDP port uh, 520, metric is hop count, 15 being the maximum usable one, 16 being infinite. Uh, the hello interval, by default, the hello interval, well, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm going up to the update interval. Uh, RIP version two doesn't have an hello interval. They don't send hellos. All they do is send up the their entire routing table um, and uh, that's by default 30 seconds. Um, so there is no hello interval, there's only an update interval. Uh, the update destination for root version two uses the multicast address of 224.009. That's important to know. Uh, root version two also supports full and partial updates. So if I need a update for a specific route, I will send a partial update. If not, give me your whole routing table because I need it. Um, triggered updates, that's also pretty neat, where if something happens, I'm gonna immediately tell my neighbor about it, all right? Uh, Authentication, RIP version two supports plain text and MD5 hashing. Uh, route tagging, uh, you are allowed to tag routes in RIP version two, and this is mainly used for uh, redistribution, things like that. Uh, the next hop field says supports the assignment of the next hop IP address for a route, allowing a route to advertise a next hop router that is different from itself. So just in case um, that ever needs to be used, but most of the time, um, all zeros will be put in the next hop field, meaning use the source destination or uh, the source address of the next hop field. So this is used when you actually advertise a route to your neighbor. Right. Uh, more about it. Um, RIP version two exchange routes by sending version two updates. I mean, uh, that seems trivial, but yeah. RIP version two by default only sends version two updates on version two enabled interfaces. And by default, that's 30 seconds. Uh, this is based on the IP routing table, basically all R routes and all C routes. So all RIP routes that I learned, all C routes that are enabled for RIP version two, I will send that out. Again, no hello messages. Uh, updates are always sent to 224.009. However, if you are running version two and for some reason multicast or it's not allowed, you can uh, send updates to the version one address, which is just the broadcast address of 255, 255, 255, 255, right? Uh, also version two sends two types of messages, requests and responses. Uh, both messages are identical. However, in the four byte header, uh, there is a four byte header of, of this uh, RIP message. Only two bytes are used, but in the first byte, if it's set to one, then it's a request message. If it's set to two, then it's a response. Uh, the other byte is for the version. Two equals version two, one equals one. And I have a, a uh, picture of it. So you can see here the command section, that is, is this going to be a request or a response? What version am I running? Three and four of the octet, of the header, um, octet three and four, it's all zero, so it's not gonna use. The address family, address family ID, if you're running, if you're routing for IP, it's gonna be set to two. There's the route tag and then the meat of the updates. So it says up to 25 in a single RIP message. So if you have more than 25 routes that you're advertising, then you're gonna have to send multiple routes to the, or multiple updates. Uh, a request message is used to ask a neighbor to send a partial or full update immediately. This helps speeding up with convergence. And if I request a full update and I want it now, I'm going to set the address family to zero and the metric of 16. Other than that, everything should else should be normal. Then I just want um, an update on a particular network. Um, if I do a clear IP route to, or a star, 
clear IP route star to clear and flush out my routing table, that is basically telling RIP to ask for a full update. All right. Uh, more on uh, the basics, and then we'll get into convergence and loop prevention. But again, let me re reiterate that RIP version 2 uses the hop count metric, 15 being the largest used, and then 16 considered to be infinity. And then as you go through each router, it's going to be incremented by one. However, as I was reading this in the CCIE book, RIP version 2 routers don't send its own metric in the update. So like, let's say, and I have an example right here, if my metric to this destination is three, I'm not gonna send three and then tell my, and then have my neighbor figure out, oh, it's one hop, so let me add that to four. I will do that for him. So I have a metric of three, as I build my update, I'm gonna send it out with a four, which is pretty neat, I, I, didn't, I did not know that. And then, um, RIPNG and EIGRP, they do not do that. They send whatever their metric is, and then it's up to the, um, the neighbor to figure out what the full metric is. Uh, version two has the ability to do equal cost multipathing. By default, it's set to four, but depending on the iOS and platform, uh, it could be anywhere from one to 32, like the minimum of one, maximum of 32. But by default, it's always going to be four. And then you could alter this and verify it with the maximum paths command under the RIP process, and then verify it with the show IP protocols. All right. Uh, this is just RIP version two basics. So I brought you from what distance vector is, what the difference between link state is, and then just all the basic stuff of RIP. Now, I'm going to cut this up into different sections. So I'm going to do another video, and it's going to be on um, convergence and loop prevention. Okay. So, uh, as of right now, I hope this was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.